Hello friends, welcome back to our video lecture series on course title fluid mechanics 2. In this lecture, we will start new topic centrifugal pumps and we will discuss uh, basic introduction and components of centrifugal pump. So before uh, proceeding for the discussion of centrifugal pump, uh, we should have an idea about what is pump. So pump is a hydraulic machine which is generally used to convert mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. Now uh, this hydraulic energy may be in the form of pressure energy or may be in the form of kinetic energy or may be in the form of both partial pressure energy and partial kinetic energy. So uh, generally this uh, device called pump used to convert our mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. So basically we are using electrical energy to generate mechanical energy and after that mechanical energy will be converted into the hydraulic energy. Now if for this conversion of the mechanical energy into hydraulic energy if we use centrifugal force which is acting on the fluid then that uh, device is known as centrifugal pump. You might have already seen those centrifugal pumps at many locations, at many instances, uh, like say at household, where uh, it is uh, they are used to take water from underground tank to uh, overhead tank, or even at the water supply treatment plant, where water is need to be taken uh, uh, take from the uh, treatment plant to the distribution reservoir. So at those places, those are uh, most commonly used type of pump for transferring fluid from uh, lower level to higher level, or from one location to another location if we talk about the uh, working of the centrifugal pump so this is a typical picture of the centrifugal pump it includes the casing in which this a device is mounted which is called as impeller which is coupled on the shaft the shaft is also known as prime mover and which is connected to electrical motor on the side so uh, that electrical motor will convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and that mechanical energy will be transmitted through the shaft towards this impeller which will start to rotate and whatever the fluid which is coming from the suction pipe which will be bolted at this position which is coming at this particular uh, impeller that will also start rotating and at, at that moment there will be a development of centrifugal force on that rotating fluid and due to that centrifugal force that liquid will be pushed away from the center axis of rotation and after that through this casing it will taken to the delivery pipe and from where it will be delivered to the desired location. So basically if we talk about the working of the centrifugal pump of course it will be based on the principle of forced vortex flow which states that a certain mass of liquid made to rotate by using an external force then it will thrown away from the central axis of rotation and centrifugal head will be impressed which enables it to rise to a higher level. Now if you see here a particular arrangement of the centrifugal pump this is the suction pipe which is uh, inserted into the sump from where water is need to be taken to this overhead tank. So this will be a suction pipe which will be connected to a casing. Inside the casing there will be an impeller which is coupled on the shaft and that casing will uh, connect it to the delivery pipe. Now when uh, electrical uh, motor will start to convert electrical energy into the mechanical energy that mechanical energy will be transmitted through the shaft to this impeller and with that rotation this impeller will also start rotating and due to this rotation there will be a development of suction head at the center of this impeller which is known as eye of the impeller and at the eye of impeller due to the development of suction head water will be taken from the sum towards the center of the impeller towards the eye of the impeller and when as that impeller is rotating the fluid which come in contact with that impeller will also start to rotate and due to that continuous rotation there would be a development of centrifugal force on that liquid and due to the development of centrifugal force this liquid will push it away in the outer side of the casing now this casing is the airtight chamber in which uh, this uh, liquid will be pushed in outer side now if you see the picture of the casing if you see uh, starting from this point this casing is having gradually increasing area of flow as you are moving away and away as you are reaching to the outlet point due to that what will happen when my liquid pushed away in uh, casing from the center of the impeller towards the casing outer part of the casing its kinetic velocity or whatever the kinetic energy will start to convert into the pressure energy due to this increasing area of flow as it is uh, moving towards the outlet point its pressure energy will goes on increasing and when you reach to the outlet point at that point its pressure would become 
maximum so at this point we are getting maximum pressure and with that maximum pressure we are able to take water into the delivery pipe and from here you are able to deliver it to the desired location or wherever you want you can see here my water is coming through this delivery pipe and will be get delivered to the overhead tank so what's happening here due to the rotation of the impeller there will be a formation of suction aid due to that suction aid water will be taken through the suction pipe towards the eye of the impeller and there will be a development of centrifugal force on the liquid due to that liquid will pushed in the outward direction and will be taken to the delivery point so what we are getting here due to the continuous rotation development of centrifugal force and due to that there will be a development of pressure head on this particular liquid this is a uh, centrifugal pump generally works if we talk about the classification of the pump types of pump so on the basis of transfer of uh, mechanical energy the pump can be broadly classified as rotodynamic pump and positive displacement pump or reciprocating pump so our centrifugal pump is the uh, type of rotodynamic pump which is also called as radial flow pump another two types of the rotodynamic pumps are there that is axial flow pump and mixed flow pump if you talk about the reciprocating pump which are also known as positive displacement pump uh, where the arrangement would be made in such a way that uh, whenever there would be a development of suction head or suction pressure in this particular point with the help of this piston rod this valve will open which is not written valve and when this piston is moving in the forward direction at that time this valve will be closed and this valve will be open and with uh, water will be pushed in the upward direction so uh, hand pump is the best example of this uh, reciprocating pump where we are using the same uh, phenomenon to take liquid from the uh, deep ground if we talk about the another classification which is based on the characteristic features of the centrifugal pump or centrifugal pump may be classified on the basis of like say type of casing working head or liquid handle or uh, how many impeller type of impeller you are using at the centrifugal pump so based on the type of casing or centrifugal pump may classified as volute pump and turbine pump if we are talking about the head how much head against which my pump should work then if you see here uh, this is my uh, free surface of the liquid from where i need to take water to this particular overhead tank so what we need to do we need to measure this total head against which my uh, pump is need to work that mean that that head should be get develop inside the pump to take water up to that particular position so in this case that head would be divided into two parts the first one would be the suction head in which water will be taken from this uh, sump of the water to the eye of the impeller and this is called as suction head because in this portion there will be development of negative head and from the center of impeller whatever the desired point of the delivery if we measure another head that is known as delivery head and if we uh, combine those two heads together then i would get total head or head against which my pump need to work or uh, which uh, my pump need to develop that is delivery head plus suction head and if we are considering a frictional losses or any losses which are taking place in between those uh, two positions in between this suction head and uh, delivery head then those uh, losses should be get added so this should be the total head against which my pump need to work to deliver water from this level to this level so on the basis of this a uh, centrifugal pump is classified as low lift centrifugal pump uh, working against the head up to the 15 meter medium lift centrifugal pump uh, which used to develop uh, head as high as 40 meter or if we talk about the high lift centrifugal pump which are generally employed to deliver uh, liquids at heads above 40 meter again which how you are going to handle that liquid that would be depend on the which type of impeller you are using like say closed impeller pump semi uh, open impeller pump and open impeller pump next Uh, number of impeller per shaft how many impeller has been fixed on the per shaft so it will be depend on how much head you want to develop so if uh, you uh, require a lower lift or lower head development in that case single stage centrifugal pump would be enough but if you want to uh, develop high head in that case of course you need a multiple uh, impeller which should be fixed on the same shaft and which is known as multi stage centrifugal pump again uh, according to the relative direction of flow through the impeller a centrifugal pump can also be classified as radial flow pump axial flow pump mixed flow pump that we already discuss our centrifugal pump is the uh, come under the category of radial flow pump where uh, uh, discharge is uh, coming radially to the impeller and leaving to the uh, impeller at the outlet now if you talk about the advantages of the centrifugal pump over the reciprocating pump then the biggest advantage of centrifugal pump is that its discharging capacity which is very high as compared to reciprocating pump now if we talk about the uh, 
uh, viscous or type of or nature of the liquid which you want to lift then in that case centrifugal pump is more flexible because it can be used for the lifting highly viscous liquids such as oils muddy and uh, sewage water water uh, paper pulp sugar molasses chemicals etc so almost in all kind of viscous liquids uh, we can easily use the centrifugal pump to lift that liquid or to take that liquid from one position or one location to another location but if we talk about the reciprocating pump then it can handle only pure water or less viscous liquids which are free from the impurities otherwise its well may get uh, may get clogged frequently which may require additional maintenance as compared to centrifugal pump and that is why centrifugal pump is most popular and most commonly used at different location like said industry at agriculture for the irrigation purposes at the dam or at the power plants again centrifugal pump is uh, flexible to operate with the very high speed without any danger of separation and cavitation however our centri uh, reciprocating pump can build up very high pressure and hence these pumps are used only for the lifting of oil from very deep oil as i told you that example of uh, hand pump where we are using that reciprocating pump kind of phenomena to take liquid from the deep uh, bore wells to the ground so this is what some uh, advantages of our centrifugal pump now if we talk about the different components of the centrifugal pump so there are four major and important component of the centrifugal pump if we start with the bottom uh, there will be a suction pipe with the foot wall and strainer at the bottom there would be a impeller which is fixed in the casing and there would be a, a delivery pipe which is coming with the delivery valve so those are the four important component impeller casing suction pipe and delivery pipe so let's discuss those uh, components of the centrifugal pump one by one the first one is the impeller impeller is the wheel or rotor which is provided with the series of backward curve vane if you see here it is the a wheel which is provided with the backward curve vane so when it will rotate those backward curve vane is going to create a angular momentum or going to exert a force on the liquid which come in contact with that and there would be a development of centrifugal force what we have discussed previously now this impeller would be mounted on the shaft and which is connected to the electric motor uh, from where we are getting uh, uh, mechanical energy so basically electrical motor will convert mechanical energy into uh, sorry electrical energy into mechanical energy and that mechanical energy will be transmitted through the shaft to the impeller now if you talk about the uh, different types of the impeller so based on the purpose of the impeller impeller may be classified as closed impeller semi open impeller and open impeller so we'll discuss those one by one the first one is closed impeller the closed impeller will be designed in such a way that it will have two plates one would be the base plate and another is said to be a crown plate so if we talk about the plate on the side of shaft it is known as base plate and another plate which is facing towards the uh, suction pipe which is known as crown plate now those two plates will be uh, fixed in such a way that there would be a opening provided for the backward curve vanes and small opening would be provided in between those two so whenever my water is coming through this suction pipe that will be moved through those uh, this uh, gap or whatever the annular space available in between those two plates and that's why uh, it become limited to use whenever your water carries some impurities or it have and some uh, uh, you know suspended solids inside the water in that case you cannot employ this uh, closed type impeller of course it is going to improve our efficiency uh, as it is uh, closed and it is water is moving through those backward curve vanes annular space available in between uh, back, uh, backward curve vanes but if water contains some amount of uh, like say suspended solid or any impurities then in that case uh, it may create a damage it may cause a damage to those backward curve vanes and then this impeller would be subjected to higher amount of maintenance now if you talk about the semi open open impeller so semi open impeller having only a base plate there would be no crown plate in this case and whatever our backward curve vane will be mounted or fixed on this base plate so this type of impeller can be used if even uh, liquid contains some amount of uh, debris inside that or some suspended solid because it may not going to uh, create any uh, blocking effect as it is open from one side and that's why it is known as semi open impeller now if you talk about the open impeller open impeller neither having the crown plate or nor the base plate it will be only a wings so this would be a shaft and i have the impeller and on that from that i have the impeller uh, there will be a directly 
backward curved wings so there would be no uh, base plate and crown plate available in this case and this is much useful because if you see here there is if there is no plate so of course you can use it in such cases that where suspended solid matter are uh, available in the water with high amount uh, like say paper pulp sewage and water containing sand or grit in those cases uh, this kind of impeller can be employed now the second component is the casing which is a uh, air tight chamber and which surrounds the impeller so our impeller will be placed inside the casing and casing going going to guide our water from the suction pipe towards the impeller and from the impeller towards the delivery pipe if you see here whatever our water is coming through the suction pipe towards the impeller inside the casing so our casing is going to guide it towards the impeller and from the impeller it is going to take water towards the delivery point towards the outlet point so uh, if you see here as we are developing pressure head and as we are converting portion of the kinetic kinetic energy into the pressure energy of course our casing is going to play important role in case of centrifugal pump because it is going to serve a hydraulic function that is conversion of kinetic energy into the pressure energy and if you talk about the different type of casing so there are basically three types of the casing the first one is the volute casing in this type of the casing uh, area flow goes on increasing gradually as we are moving from this point that is uh, this is said to be a inlet point and if you are moving towards the delivery pipe like said at the outlet point and due to this increasing area of flow what our velocity of flow will decrease and of course on the other side my pressure will be increases so of course it is going to convert our uh, kinetic energy into the pressure energy and at the outlet our pressure would be maximum now the second casing which is known as vortex casing uh, if the circular chamber is provided in between volute casing and the impeller then it is known as vortex casing this vortex casing uh, going to provide the additional conversion of kinetic energy into the pressure energy so whenever my liquid which is coming out from the impeller and moving through that circular chamber at that time there would be a po uh, some part of the kinetic energy will be converted into the pressure energy and further when it is moving away from that circular chamber outer in the outer ring in the volute casing at that time further that kinetic energy will be converted into the pressure energy so there will be a double conversion of the uh, kinetic energy into the pressure energy and due to that of course our efficiency of this kind of pump would be improved as compared to simple volute pump so if you are uh, if we are uh, employing such kind of uh, casing to the pump then of course our whatever the pressure available at the outlet that would be more so whatever the head developed in this case would be more which is going to provide higher efficiency and the last one is the casing with the guide blades now uh, if uh, impeller provided with the series of guide blades what we have uh, discussed or what we know in case of francis turbine or in case of kaplan turbine what guide vanes we are using if th that kind of arrangement is available inside the casing then that casing is known as casing with the guide blades and of course uh, this is most commonly used in case of reversible turbine when uh, where you want to generate power when water is moving from the uh, upper reservoir to lower reservoir and again if you want to take uh, that lower water from lower reservoir to upper reservoir then same turbine would be used at pump and in that case this kind of casing is available uh, that kind of power plant where uh, the uh, recycled water is used uh, to generate electricity it is known as pumped storage plant so in that case uh, what they generally do uh, let us say this is the dam at the upstream side and this is the dam at the downstream side now if uh, at the first cycle what we will do we will take water from the upper dam to the towards the lower dam and at that time we will develop a power again that water will be stored in the second dam and again with the help of pump we are taking back that water in the first dam that is upper reservoir and then the same turbine is going to work as a pump that is also called as reversible turbine and in the uh, in those cases those guide blades uh, those guide blades are available in the uh, casing so of course uh, those guide blades will be placed in such a way that it will having a, a gradually increasing area of flow in between those guide blades when my water is moving out from the impeller so it will having increasing gradually increasing area of flow and due to that of kinetic energy will be converted into the pressure energy of course it is going to provide a maximum efficiency but if you compare the, the, this kind of pump with the other pump then those are said to be a costlier uh, as compared to our volute casing pump or vortex casing pump if you move towards the uh, next component that is suction pipe so suction pipe uh, is the pipe which is going to connect our eye of the impeller to the water sump or source of the water so our suction pipe come with the strainer which is going to prevent uh, entry of any debris or suspended solid towards this uh, mechanism 
uh, otherwise it will uh, you know create a damage it will may cause a damage to the impeller or uh, blades or vanes again it will come up with the foot valve uh, at the bottom which is work as a non return valve so whenever your pump is off at that time it is going to prevent any back entry of the water now this pipe is generally airtight because as we want to develop a suction head in this particular pipe so it will be airtight and it is going to take our water from source of the water towards the eye of the impeller so it is going to take water from the uh, water source and going to deliver it to the eye of the impeller after that there will be a delivery pipe it will be connected to the outlet of the casing and going to deliver our water to the delivery point wherever we want to deliver and that delivery uh, pipe will come with the delivery wall uh, where you can control your discharge outlet discharge or even it can be used for the priming of course we will discuss that uh, concept of priming in the next lecture so uh, whenever this water uh, coming out from the casing with the conversion of kinetic energy into the pressure energy and with the value of pressure energy maximum at the outlet it will be moved through the delivery pipe and delivered to the desired location so those are the uh, some compo different components important component of the centrifugal pump hope you uh, understood all the points which we have discussed in this lecture those are the references which i have used while preparing my presentation thank you for watching